Hello everyone and welcome to IPM Leap. Today we are going to study circular permutations, a topic which is a little confusing and difficult to understand for students. So while you might have seen all the formulae on your screen in your maths textbooks, learning how to apply them to various questions on circular arrangements is a different ballgame altogether. So in today's math lesson, the focus will not be on memorizing these formulae, but on understanding their logic so that you are able to correctly solve each and every question that is asked from this topic in various entrance exams. Let's begin. First, we should know the difference between linear arrangements versus circular arrangements. Think of five distinct objects which are to be arranged in a row. Together, they will occupy five slots as you can see here. So how do we go about filling these slots? We first fill the first slot using any one of the five objects. This can be done in five ways. The second slot can then be filled in four ways because one object has already gone into the first slot. The third slot can then be filled in three ways the fourth in two ways and for the last slot we will be left with only one object. So altogether these five objects can be arranged in a row in 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 that is 5 factorial or 120 ways. In general n different objects can be linearly permuted or arranged in n factorial ways. Now instead of five objects you could be arranging five persons but the number of arrangements remain the same, 5 factorial. Please observe these two ways of arranging the 5 persons. The first one looks like A, B, C, D and E. While in the second one, we have shifted all of them one position to the left and placed A to the extreme right. It looks like B, C, D, E, A. Now the important question is, would you consider these two as same or different? Well, they are obviously different. The very fact that the first arrangement starts with A and second starts with B makes them different. Contrast this to a circular arrangement. The same five objects when arranged around a round table, the configuration looks like this. And if you move along the table in a clockwise direction, you will be able to see both the first and the second arrangements A, B, C, D, E as well as B, C, D, E, A in the same configuration of the round table. In fact, if you start at C, you will additionally observe the arrangement C, D, E, A, B. If you start at D, you will observe the arrangement D, E, A, B, C. And if you start at E, you will be able to observe E, A, B, C, D. In a row arrangement, we need to take into consideration the position of all the persons or objects. But at the round table, it all depends on where you start. It's all relative. This is because a circle has no starting or ending point. So these five arrangements, which are counted as different in linear arrangements, become the same in a circular arrangement. In both cases, A, B, C, D, E have been arranged in a clockwise order, isn't it? So can I say that these five arrangements in a row are equivalent to this single arrangement around the circular table? Yes, of course. And therefore, for counting the number of circular arrangements in this example, we must divide the number of linear arrangements by 5. 5 factorial divided by 5 is 4 factorial. That's why the number of arrangements of five objects around the circle is 4 factorial. Now that you have understood that in a circle which has no starting or ending point, we observe arrangements related to any one of the objects. There is a very simple approach that will help us solve all questions on circular permutation without exception. What we must do is, we fix any one of them, say you can fix B or even C or even A. And next, we see how many arrangements of the remaining n-1 objects are possible 
with respect to that fixed object. The remaining n minus 1 objects can be arranged in n minus 1 positions in n minus 1 vectorial ways. Therefore, the number of ways of arranging n objects around a circular table is n minus 1 vectorial. On the other hand, when we have a row or straight line, there are n factorial ways of arranging n persons or n distinct objects. So, 5 people can be arranged around a circular table in 5 minus 1 factorial, that is 4 factorial or 24 ways. Let's try to attempt a few questions on circular permutations where there are other restrictions as well. So, find the number of ways in which 5 people A, B, C, D and E can be seated at a round table such that and there are two parts to this question. In the first part of this question, A and B always sit together. We have learned that 5 people can be arranged on a round table in 4 factorial that is 24 ways. Always remember guys, any circular permutation question First, we choose the particular person that we need to fix and after that, we address other restrictions. So, in this question, if A and B must sit together, let's fix A. That will make our question simpler. A got seated in one way. Now, B sits either to his left or to his right. Therefore, B can be seated in two ways. Once we have seated B, say on the left, there are no more restrictions. So, the remaining three people can be seated in the remaining three seats in three factorial, that is, six ways. Recall that n people can be arranged in n positions in n factorial ways. By using the fundamental rule of counting, together A and B and then the rest of the persons can be seated in 2 into 6, that is, 12 ways. Part B of this question is C and D never sit together, which means C and D are separated. We can follow a very simple approach here. Number of ways where C and D are separated is equal to total number of ways of seating 5 people on a circular table, which is 4 factorial, minus the number of ways where C and D are together. Now it's obvious from part A of this question that if A and B were seated together in 12 ways, then C and D, or for that matter any other pair, would also be together in exactly 12 ways. So our answer is 4 factorial minus 12, which is equal to 12 ways. Another approach for the same question is illustrated in question number 3 of this video. Next question is quite straightforward. It was asked in IP Mat IIM Rotok. Can you calculate in how many ways eight tennis players be seated in a circular order? And the options are 2520, 5040, 1440, and 6040. Now we know that n people can be arranged around a circular table in n minus 1 factorial ways. Therefore, eight tennis players can be arranged around a circular table in 8 minus 1 factorial, that is 7 factorial ways. 7 factorial evaluates to 5040. That's it. Option B is our correct answer. Third question is 12 persons are to be arranged on a round table. If two particular persons among them are not to be seated side by side, then total number of arrangements are and we have to choose one of the options. So don't forget, any circular permutation question, look at the restrictions and address them first. You will also get a clue about the person to be fixed, seeing those restrictions. So let's say those two particular people are A and B. Let's fix A. Next, we must ensure that B does not sit on either of the seats adjacent to A, because that's the only restriction in the arrangement of these people. So let's fill the adjacent C's to the left and right of A, the person we have fixed, before we fill the remaining C's. So this seat 
We can't fill A because A is already seated and we can't fill B. How many left? 12 minus 2 that is 10 people. This seat can be filled in 10 ways. And any other person except B, say F, gets seated here. Next, we fill this seat. We can't fill A and F because they are already seated on the round table. And we can't fill B. How many left? 12 minus 3, that is 9 persons. This seat can be filled in 9 ways. Now we don't have any other restrictions. So the remaining 9 seats can be filled with remaining 9 people, including B, in 9 factorial ways. Therefore, all 12 people can be seated in 10 into 9 into 9 factorial, which is equal to 9 into 10 factorial ways. I have used the fundamental rule of counting here. You may watch our other lessons on permutations and combinations, including the fundamental rule, if you feel you need to revise them. Our answer for this question is option A. Fourth question is, there are two brothers among a group of 20 persons. In how many ways can the group be arranged around a circular table so that there is exactly one person between the two brothers. And these are the options. So suppose that those brothers are A and A dash. First we will fix one of them, say the blue one, A. Now A dash sits either to the left or to the right, leaving a gap of one seat in both cases, isn't it? That means A dash can be seated in two ways. We don't have any more restrictions now. Out of the 20 persons, A and A dash, two of them are already seated. And the remaining 18 seats can be filled with the remaining 18 people in 18 factorial ways. So by using the fundamental rule of counting, all 20 persons can be seated in 2 into 18 factorial ways. So option D is our correct answer. And this one is my favorite. I have taught this as an example to multiple batches of students for over 10 years. The question is, there are 12 students to be divided into two teams for group discussions. Team number one of five students sits in a semicircular arrangement, while team number two of seven students sits in a circular arrangement. Find the total number of ways in which all these students be seated. This is a classic question combining the basics of combinations, linear permutations and circular permutations and the options are really tricky. So listen carefully. If we knew which five students would go into team one, they would be seated in five factorial ways because that's very much like a linear arrangement. It has a start and an end. Similarly, if we knew which seven students will go into team two, they could be seated in six factorial ways. But in the beginning, we don't know who goes where. So first, the GD committee selects students for both teams. That can be done in 12 C5 ways. The moment five students get shortlisted for team one, obviously the remaining seven go to team two. So for team two, we don't need a fresh selection. In any case, recall that 12 C5 is equal to 12c7. The selection needs to be done only and only once. And then comes the arrangement part. Once selected, the five students of team one can be arranged in five factorial ways. The remaining seven students who will be in team two can be arranged in six factorial ways. Together, the three tasks above can be carried out in 12c5 into five factorial into six factorial ways using the fundamental rule of counting. Because we need to select students for both teams and arrange team one and arrange team two, we need to multiply and means multiply, okay? So option C is our correct answer. Finally, we have the question, find the number of ways in which four girls and four boys can be arranged around a circular table so that none of the boys are together. 
For this condition to be met, that boys are separated, girls and boys must be seated alternately. So suppose we fix any one girl, maybe G3, on position number 1. That can be done in only one way. Position number 3, number 5, number 7 can be occupied by the remaining 3 girls in 3 factorial ways. And position number 2, number 4, number 6 and number 8 can be occupied by the 4 boys in 4 factorial ways. Together, all girls and boys, remember that and means multiply. They can be seated in 3 factorial into 4 factorial ways which is equal to 6 into 24. That is 144 ways. Now we come to a very special instance of circular permutation where we have a bracelet or necklace with multicolored beads. In how many ways can you string together 6 beads to form a necklace? So we have already studied that around a circular table the number of arrangements is n minus 1 factorial. In this n minus 1 factorial ways, clockwise and anticlockwise arrangement of objects are counted as different. This is because a table cannot be flipped vertically, legs up. Okay, so A, B, C, D, A in clockwise order and A, B, C, D, E in anticlockwise order are considered different and both are included as two separate arrangements in n minus 1 factorial base. But the same is not true for a necklace. Consider the following arrangement of beads in a clockwise order. Green, purple, red, blue, pink and yellow. If you take out the necklace and flip it vertically, the same clockwise arrangement of beads becomes anti-clockwise. Isn't it? Let me show this flip animation so that you can visualize this happening. See again. And obviously, we have not reassembled the beads on the necklace. It's the same arrangement of beads. Clockwise and anticlockwise are not considered different. So, we need to divide our number of circular permutations by 2 to account for this. n minus 1 factorial by 2. n different beads can be arranged in circular necklace in n minus 1 factorial divided by 2 ways. So, in this last question on circular permutations, we have to apply this simple concept. Find the total number of ways in which 9 multicolored beads can form a necklace. We know that n different beads can be arranged in a circular necklace in n minus 1 factorial divided by 2 ways because clockwise and anticlockwise arrangements are considered the same. Therefore, 9 multicolored beads can be arranged to form a necklace in 9 minus 1 factorial divided by 2, that is 8 factorial divided by 2. It evaluates to the figure of 20160 ways. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope you all are quite comfortable with the circular permutations now and have got all your confusions cleared for good. If you like this video, don't forget to press the like button and do subscribe our channel for more such useful content. Good luck and take care.